Hi, I'm James, I'm with Garn, and I'm here in our test facility to show you some basic maintenance on your unit. Today we're going to talk about taking off the lower clean-out covers and cleaning the heat exchanger tubes with the uh, wire brush that you can purchase. So in front of me I've got some of the basic materials you'll want to use. Safety is always first. If you don't have glasses, you should wear safety glasses. And you should always wear a mask because you're going to be dealing with a lot of fine particulate matter. Uh, I won't be having this on today because I'm recording this. So this is the model 2000 we're doing. Uh, the model 1500 is a couple feet shorter. We have three three foot fiberglass rods that go with the cleaning brushes. And there's two different size brushes. There's a four inch brush that does the lower two clean outs and the um, motor flue clean out. And then there's a five inch brush that uh, does the last run that goes to the uh, actual chimney. We've got some high temperature anises that's available at any automotive parts stores. You want to have some kind of a putty knife to clean the surface before you put the new gasket on. You want to have a 916 socket and it can be either with a drill or with a hand wrench. I use a drill it's faster and uh, I like to use the longer socket so it'll go over the bolts easier and you don't bottom out. You want to have some masking tape and of course you need the new gaskets to replace as you're taking off the old ones to do the cleaning. Gaskets can wear out and they'll stick so whenever you take one off for uh, cleaning or maintenance it's a good idea to have a new one available to replace it. This is the heat shield that goes on the lower left uh, clean out and that's because you've got a lot of particulate matter coming down the tube and it basically would sandblast the gasket off so we put this call it a heat shield on the gasket to prevent it from eroding. The right one does not need that because that tube is under suction. But you just line up with the holes on the gasket and just one section of tape and that will keep the that will keep the uh, heat shield from bottoming out on the weld so it doesn't seal properly. So all it takes is one section of tape like that and basically you're ready to go. All right, we're going to take off the lower left cleanout cover and show you how you run a uh, wire brush through that and do the cleaning. Most of you will have some kind of an insulated jacket on your unit and the cover will be recessed inside. It's another reason I like to have a longer extension. It, it makes it easier to uh, take the nuts on and off. Again, from a safety standpoint, you want to have some kind of safety glasses. You should be using a respirator. One thing that uh, many people do to make this easier is if you turn the blower on while you're doing the cleaning operation, the lower cleanouts, that will suck all the dust and dirt up through there. It's a good idea to have a vacuum cleaner to clean up any dust uh, after, the, after you're done with the cleaning. Make sure that each of these sections is well screwed together. The last thing you want to do is have something break or come loose while you're inside cleaning the unit. Never turn these rods counterclockwise because there's a chance you could unscrew the brush and leave it in there. Once you've got it all assembled, it pushes in quite easily. You just push her straight back the whole distance. And you'll feel the resistance at the end and then pull it out. And that's all there is to it. You can go back through here a couple times. Again, wear a mask. And if you run the uh, blower motor, that'll keep all the dust and particulate matter out of the space. Now this is the old uh, heat shield and cover plate. To clean the gasket and get it off, you'll need some kind of a putty knife. These will adhere sometimes to the cover of the gasket and sometimes also to the paint on the unit. And it's important that you get all that off so you get a good seal 
on the uh, once you put the thing back together. This is what keeps the any particulates from coming out into the room and any kind of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide from leaking into the space. See, that's where the tape from the original gasket was. Now, you also have to clean all the material from around the unit that's up against the paint. And this will usually take some time to get in there and clean that out. Again, if the unit, if you got the blower on, it'll suck all that dust material out. Once you've got that clean and ready for replacement, then you take your high temperature anti-seize that's available in any automotive parts store. Coat each bolt at the end. That'll make it easier to get the cover plate off the next time you go to do your maintenance. The left side has the heat shield on the gasket taped on and you just put that on and then your cover plate goes back on. You tighten those on and you never want to be too snug the first time you go around. Just very loosely get them in place and then you go around, tighten it a little bit more each time to make sure everything is seated well. You want these to be snug but you don't have to do go too tight and sometimes I'll use a hand wrench just to make sure that I have a sense of how hand tight they are. You'd follow the exact same procedure on the right side, and that's all there is to uh, cleaning the lower cleanouts and replacing the lower gaskets. In this seg segment, we're going to do the motor tube, which uses a four inch brush, and then the last run on the unit uses a five inch brush. Then you use conventional flue cleaning materials to do whatever your class A chimney flue is. Usually they're six or eight inch. So to remove this, I use a power drill. First you disconnect the motor and the sensor from the controller so everything is disconnected. I always leave the top nuts last so that it holds the motor in place. There you go. We're going to put the four inch brush through this clean out. That's all there is to that one. Let's take the other one off. And this comes off. This one takes the five inch brush and first you have to remove the flow stabilizer. Again, you can see the light coating of dust that's on it. That's the way it should look if your garden unit is operating properly. You just push this in. And that is really all there is to cleaning out the top two flues. If what you have is a horizontal unit, that will complete what you're going to do to clean the tubes in the unit itself. The chimney, you'll use conventional chimney cleaning brushes like uh, the manufacturer of your Class A flue would recommend. If it's a vertical unit, then there's a rear clean out that you will take the cover off and clean it just like you did this one, again using the five inch brush. After you've cleaned the heat exchanger tubing, then it's time to replace the blower motor assembly and upper cleanout. Always wear a dust mask and safety glasses for this procedure. 
Then reassemble them as you were shown in the lower cleanouts. Scrape and clean the unit surface and back of the cleanout plates to remove all gasket material adhered to the surface. Then put anisease compound on each of the bolts. Hold the assembly securely and carefully slide it onto the bolts. Put a nut on the top bolt to stabilize the blower motor assembly. Then tighten the nuts lightly crisscrossing across the plate so the assembly seats well before tightening. Then spin the blower wheel from inside the blower housing to make sure it isn't hitting or scraping anywhere in the housing. Adjust as needed. Then put on the upper cleanout gasket and connect the power and sensor to the controller and you're done. These units burn very clean under typical use. You shouldn't have to clean more than once or twice a year. If you're seeing a lot of material building up on your tubes, it means something isn't right in the operation. And that's all there is to cleaning your heat exchange tubes in your garden unit.